Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. And I would like to thank the uh, scientific committee for the opportunity to speak here today in this conference. And uh, I am Adriana. I work in a federal university in Brazil. And uh, now I will talk about uh, one of the our lines of research based on aptamers and aptamers uh, characterization. And uh, we have another lines of research based on molecular markers, principally for uh, no coding RNA and uh, for prostate cancer. So now I will talk about selection and characterization of RNA aptamers targeting the genomic five line UTR in the dengue virus. <coughs> These are some authors of uh, our work and uh, she is Elismar, and uh, she is Amanda. Both are from my lab. And the other school authors are from another university in Brazil called the Federal University of Uberlândia. And uh, this is Goiás State. And uh, this is Catalan City, the city where, where I live. And uh, one of the cities that have UFD. And uh, this is where my lab is located. So uh, now I will to introduce our work and talk about uh, dengue infections, dengue virus, and the theater about uh, our methodology that was Celex. So the increasing number of dengue infections is becoming a very important for global public health care programs because this disease is responsible for a high rates of morbidity and mortality in, sub -sub in tropical and subtropical regions of the world. And Aedes aegypti is the primary vector of dengue. Considering incidence in the world, around 15 to 100 million people are infected by dengue virus yearly, and over 2.5 billion people live in areas at risk of infection in over 100 countries. And the dengue virus present, uh, presents four serotypes that, is, that are responsible for the symptoms of the diseases, such as fever and lethal hemorrhagic shock syndrome. And uh, uh, the figure on the left show us a cell infected by dengue virus. And the figure on the right, uh, we can uh, see the envy virus organized in a capsid with hycosahedral symmetry. Inside the, the viral particle is a positive sense RNA with approximately 11 KB. And the open reading frame codify, codifies a polyprotein uh, which uh, three are structural and seven are non-structural. And uh, the ORF is flanked by five line and three line UTRs. Both of them present uh, conformational structures uh, that act as functional elements uh, involved in the replication and transcriptional process uh, of the dengue virus of the virus. Um, now I will present for you Celex systematic evolution of ligands by exponential enrichment 
It is uh, in vitro selection and amplification of nucleic acid ligands called aptamers. And aptamers can be single strand DNA or RNA. And uh, these uh, molecules present uh, low immunogenicity compared to antibodies and present high affinity and selectivity for its target. This target can be cells, proteins, other nucleic acids, um, viruses, and uh, this methodology uh, can be used for diagnosis and or therapies proposed for severe diseases. So the objective of our work was to use Selex for selection of ligands for five-line UTR of dengue virus and uh, to use uh, in silico analysis for its characterization. So and here I will, will point out the main steps that uh, we used in our work. First, we constructed the uh, RNA library, and after we constructed a uh, five-line UTR coupled to magnetic bead, and uh, the bead was coated with uh, streptavidin, and the streptavidin presents affinity, affinity to biotin, and our target was biotinylated. So uh, the, first the, the first step was incubation of the library with the target. And after removing non-ligands, so uh, the ligands was eluted, were eluted. And after we submitted the, the ligands to RT-PCR and uh, in vitro transcription, these steps was repeated for eight rounds. And here we have the, our uh, RNA random library. We used the one microgram of human genomic DNA pool that was fragmented for 15 minutes by using Sonicator. And after we performed the PCR using random primers, one of them contained T7 promoter sequence. And uh, here uh, are the PCR products. And we selected the products varying from 40 to 700 in base pairs in length. And uh, we recovered these products for electrophoresis agarose gel purified and uh, used for in vitro transcription reaction. And uh, here is the target. Here we call the RNA-like because uh, we performed PCR, asymmetric PCR, and we use the DUTP instead of the TTP. So we uh, extract the RNA after, infect, uh, after infection of C6, 36 cell culture, and after we submit it to RT-PCR using a specific spur, uh, primary pair. And uh, after we performed the asymmetric PCR, using the uh, sense primer with biotin. And here we have uh, the, produ uh, the amplified product with around 100 base pairs, 150 base pairs approximately for each, the NV1 and the NV type 3. And uh, here is a test for five-line UTR region for, from dengue virus labeled with biotin based on interaction with high streptavidin phosphatase, alkaline, alkaline phosphatase, and NBTBC-IP as substrate. 
And so the first uh, corresponds to single strand DNA for the V1 with biotin, two, the single strand for, for the V3 with biotin, and uh, in the tree we have a positive control. Here we use the, the sense primer as with biotin as a positive control. Here, here is uh, that plot assay. Uh, we use the here aptamers versus the target. The target was the NV type 1 and the NV type 2. And this figure don't appear, but uh, both uh, correspond a duplicate of this uh, assay. So uh, the first, on the first, we can see PCR product for five-line uh, UTR the V1 into four five-line UTR from the NV type 3, and uh, three, four, uh, a pole of PCR product for five-line uh, UTR from the NV type 1 and 3. In 5 uh, corresponds as negative control. We use the DNA scramble here. And in the 6, uh, is a positive control. And uh, here, we, we use the aptamers pool. So these results shows us uh, that uh, the aptamers present affinity to the NV type 1 and the NV type 3. In silico analysis of aptamers was performed after cloning in sequence of aptamers. And uh, here we use the folding and hybridization to the target. This is the web server. These are the web servers that we use here. And uh, uh, we perform the, a prediction of secondary structures uh, using analysis of minimal free energy, and we analyze motifs, linear motifs, using CM Fider. Um, this graphic uh, represent, represent the, the frequencies of the app timers versus random regions and uh, the most frequent uh, length was with 31 to 40 uh, sequences. And uh, we observed the three families with linear motifs and motifs of family one, which contains the sequence with five guanines or similar sequences with a single substitution with either adenine or uracil at the end position were detected more frequently. And uh, here is, are the secondary structure for five app tumors and uh, uh, structural similarities among the aptamers may indicate that functional, functional similarities occur when hybridized with the target. And finally, in this figure, we can observe it, the secondary structure of the type 1, 1 and the type 3. Both of them present the same uh, minimal free and energy. And uh, below, uh, we can see, we can observe the uh, alter alterations of the shape after hybridization with the aptamers. Uh, alterations of the shape of the dengue virus. So, in summary, uh, I present the here selection of aptamers ligands to five-line UTR of dengue virus by using Selex assay. And uh, we performed the, the characterization of aptamers using silico analysis and uh, aptamer hybridization to the target 
change the conformational structure of both, both serotypes, one and three, and these results can maybe suggest that it, most, it also occur with serotypes two and four. In this case, we use the epitamer called here B7, and the epitamer selected here in this work can have a potential application in functional studies, change the gene expression of the mosquito pose infection by the dengue, and or by promoting and disturbing the virus replication, and uh, this uh, uh, data we can uh, analyze using real-time PCR, and uh, we can perform it in the future, specifically studies for diagnosis and or therapies for dengue virus. So I would like to thank CAPS, CNPq, and FAPEG for their financial support. And uh, thanks for your time. The floor is open for questions. Maybe I can uh, start. So um, you were su uh, suggesting at the, at the end and at the beginning you were going to use this for the um, for uh, diagnosis and, and biomarkers, right? Okay. So what are what are are you having specific plans on how to do that, and can you elaborate on that? In the next steps of this work are uh, using biosensors, the epitomers as biosensors. And uh, we we uh, we all use the, these epitomers for in vitro analysis after transfection, um, but uh, for diagnosed purpose is you uh, adapted to biosensors. Any other question? Yes. It's really nice talk. Actually, I have two questions. First is, you have really interesting the RNA pool generation. Like, do you have any explanation why you use a sonication of the human genome, the RNA, instead of just build a library by solid phase synthesis? Mm -hmm. Uh, we use this. You we use the sonicator because we. Uh, seeing the uh, others papers and the uh, sonicator uh, uh, with DN DNA after sonica sonication DNA can generate more, um, more, more number of ligands okay okay and the second question is do you have any plan to link like a cleavage region to your abdomen to cleavage the wire RNA or like how well using the uh -huh. abdomen? Uh, the, uh, our purpose is to promote a disturbing of the virus replication because the virus uh, um, for replication, the virus needed the RNA needed to cyclization, okay. And uh, we think uh, our purpose is to use epitomers to promote a disturb by uh, ligand li by ligation to the five-line UTR, okay. And five-line UTR interact. Uh, uh, with uh, three-line UTR, okay, promoting a cyclization. So when we, by using epitomers, ligands to five-line UTRs, we can uh, don't uh, the, the, the viral uh, RNA, uh, we can't uh, cyclization. Do you understand me? 